Mm. All right. Hey, it's the preacher. Today we're making something called curtido. Curtido is an El Salvadorian, I don't know if you would call it a coleslaw, but it's something similar to a slaw. It's used as a condiment most of the time, where you would add this to a taco or to a sandwich. And just to be honest with you, I eat it on a little bit of everything. I'll put it on hamburgers, I'll put it on just about anything. So I first started making this a couple years ago, and I've seen a number of different recipes. All of them vary a little bit. And when you try to follow this and say, well, how much of this, how much of that? You're just going to have to go according to your taste. Go according to what you like. If you like more cabbage, go more on cabbage. If you really like uh, carrots and don't like onions, go light on the onions. But don't skip anything. You can make it as spicy or as mild as you want to make it. But what I want to show you are kind of the core ingredients for it, and then I'll show you my way of doing it. In this mixing bowl, I have a half of a large head of cabbage. I mean, we're talking a head of cabbage that was like this. So I just cut it down the middle, cored it out, and then I thinly sliced it. And so that's what we have here. Some of them pieces don't look too thin, but most of them are. So I have some thinly sliced cabbage. I did all this so you didn't have to sit here and watch me chop. Then I took a uh, medium carrot, you know, not a great big carrot, but uh, just your average size carrot. And I took a grater and uh, shredded it. And so I'm going to add that in there. Then I took a half of a white onion. And uh, what I did was I cut it very thin, some of it thinner than others, uh, some of it's thicker, but I, I cut it. Uh, in thin rings, sliced it crosswise, and then I, I cut it in about six sections, kind of like pizza sliced it, if you will. So I have some kind of long stringy onions, but they're not, they're not real long. So anyways, I did that. Then I have one large, fresh jalapeno. I sliced it lengthwise. I took the seeds and the veins out. So I have these little half moon slices. And I'm not making this hot. I don't want this to be hot. I'm making this uh, mainly for my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, when I started making this, I, I took her some and she likes it. And uh, so every time I make some, if I tell her that I've made it and I didn't bring her some, she kind of gives me the evil eye. So Christmas is coming. Today is the 16th, I believe. So we're about nine days from Christmas and that's about what this is going to take to get to taste and run. Okay. Half a head of cabbage, carrots, pepper. You I, you got to use some jalapeno. You need some pepper flavor. It don't have to be hot. And then uh, onions. I use white onions. I've used purple onions in the past, and everything turned purple, and it wasn't pretty after about two days. So I don't recommend purple onions unless you want it all to be purple haze. Something like that. All right. Now here is cilantro. How much? I don't know. I just just finely chopped some. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's just put it down here and we'll just rake it in there. Okay. There is some finely chopped cilantro. Now that we've got our vegetables in here, now we need to mix them up. And I just about got a bowl full. But the most important ingredient outside of this are these two, vinegar and salt. Because the salt is going to pull moisture out of the cabbage and soften it some. It's not going to soften it a lot. This is going to give you a really good crunch in whatever you put it in. Even two weeks down the road, it's still going to be crunchy. But the salt will pull moisture out of the cabbage and soften it some and soften the carrots as well. So let me, let me put some uh, salt in there. I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons. You say, that's a lot of salt. Well, that's, that's a lot of cabbage. All right, that's a little less. That's probably a tablespoon and a half. And I will adjust that if it needs more salt tomorrow. Set that over there. Now, this is red cayenne pepper that I grow. It's not extremely hot. It does give a nice flavor. And so I'm going to add probably a, 
oh, an eighth to a half, an eighth, or a quarter teaspoon. We're going to add a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, or not flakes, ground crushed cayenne red pepper. Here's the other big ingredient. This is what makes it curtido. This is oregano. If you got a Mexican oregano, that's be that's better. I just got grocery store oregano. It probably comes from China. All right, but we're going to put a full tablespoon, and it is this oregano uh, marinating in this cabbage for a week in vinegar and salt that give this slaw its unique flavor. So now that I've got everything in here, salt, oregano and some cayenne pepper. I'm gonna hold off putting the vinegar in there till now. I've got just regular old white vinegar and I've got some date vinegar. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyways, all I wanna do now is stir this around. I've gotta get everything thoroughly combined. You want all this cabbage covered in the seasoning. You want the salt equally distributed throughout. And uh, my, uh, my bowl is just not quite big enough for the, amount I've got in there. That oregano is making me sniffle. It's strong. Maybe it's that and the onions combined. Okay. As that salt interacts with the cabbage, the cabbage will start to soften and break down and this bowl may only be half full by the time we get done. But the main thing you, you're looking for here, the, the, the purpose of all this is to get this equally distributed because we're going to pack it into a jar and we don't want all the pepper and stuff at the top and nothing at the bottom. So by, by stirring it around with our hands and taking what's on the bottom and putting it on the top and going back and forth, we've kind of got everything equally distributed. Now I'm going to shake all that off my hands and I'm going to go rinse these off. You got to be careful when you're working with peppers, especially red cayenne peppers. Okay, what I have here is a half gallon mason jar, two quarts. These are what I typically make sauerkraut in. I think I have some sauerkraut. Yeah, there's some sauerkraut. This has been on my counter for probably two and a half months. I still eat out of it every once in a while and it's still good. This is not sauerkraut. We're not fermenting this. Instead, what we're doing is we're pickling it. You know what? I think I've got a, a fun. There we go. I'll tell you what, why don't I key up some Donnie Poindexter? He's giving me some new banjo music. Why don't I key up Donnie Poindexter and let y'all listen to some... Uh, some banjo picking while I fill this jar because there's nothing exciting about this. slide that cutting board out of the way. This is not packed in like you would pack in sauerkraut to ferment it. There's a lot of air in this. I pushed it down a little. That's just to get it all in there, but this is in no means packed tight. Now what we need to do is add vinegar. We have salt in there, so we're going to pull some water out of the cabbage, but we also need to add a little bit of vinegar. The vinegar is going to act as a preservative with the salt. Now, when you're fermenting stuff, you don't add vinegar. You let the salt do lacto-fermentation. Too much salt, it won't work. Not enough salt, it won't work. So, the amount of salt is critical when you're fermenting. But when you're pickling, the salt is just to taste. So, what I'm going to do is add this vinegar and let the vinegar set on it, let the salt settle in and permeate the cabbage. Probably tomorrow or the next day, I'll pull this out and I'll try a little bit. If it needs more salt, I will drain off some Vinegar, add salt, pour the vinegar back over the salt, and that'll carry the salt back throughout. This is date vinegar. This is not necessary. You can use apple cider vinegar, but the main thing is you don't want to use a whole lot. If you do, it'll turn everything brown. 
but I do like the sweetness that date vinegar provides. I got this at like a Jewish market when we were up in Tulsa uh, back during the summer. I just went in there and bought a bunch of weird stuff. And um, I use this a lot in barbecue sauce where I used to use a lot of apple cider vinegar. Now I use a little bit of date vinegar. It gives it a lot sweeter, richer flavor. Now the reason that I'm putting it in here with this other vinegar, I'm doing a couple of things. Well, number one, I'm mixing it so I don't have all white vinegar on the bottom and all date vinegar on the top. I'm actually mixing it, but I'm also going around and swirling the edges and getting all of that, um, all of that oregano and cayenne pepper and salt. You know what I forgot to put in here? Regular old cracked black pepper. I have a solution for that. The solution is you just put it right in the vinegar. I think I'm out. Unbelievable. There we go. That ain't going to permeate like I want it to. I'll probably have to shake it a little. So, let me give that another swirl and I'll incorporate that black pepper all in. Now I'm going to pour this in here. But this is not going to be near enough. But I'm going to ensure that I get date vinegar throughout. Because I don't want it all date, date vinegar. Remember, it's going to turn it dark. Now, you say, well, how much vinegar do you add? What's the ratio here? You want enough vinegar to add the tartness, but you don't want so much vinegar that every bite's like, ooh, that's a lot of vinegar. So what I do is I get my date vinegar and my, my white vinegar in the bottom, and then I fill up, I add some more white vinegar, and then I add water. And a little bit of water will cut vinegar. It, some people do 50-50. Um, I... I I kind of rely on the cabbage juice for a lot of my water, but you just want enough of this to cover. There it goes. Now there, we got it covered. Air bubbles will continue to come out of this for quite some time. As a matter of fact, you can even take and you can even push it down and push a lot of air bubbles out. But we don't want to pack it in there. We want these seasonings to be able to move around and, and move freely. All we want to do is kind of like a marinade. We're marinating this. We're letting the vinegar permeate everything. We're letting the salt permeate everything. Now that we got it in there, we're going to put the lid on it. There goes all that brown vinegar to the bottom. There it is being distributed throughout. Vinegar, date vinegar vinegar date vinegar you see we're kind of turning it that's what you're looking for right there everything's been mixed through we just want to keep it pushed down if you want you can take one of these uh, glass weights I use these a lot when I am doing fermentation they'll fit down in a narrow mouth jar or I mean they'll fit in a wide mouth jar you can set that in there now you can leave this out on the counter for uh, a week, two weeks. I've heard people say three weeks. I don't know. It really depends on how much vinegar and salt you put in there as to how well it'll keep. And there again, I'm not giving you exact measurements because everything needs to be tailored towards your taste. If you like more carrots, you need more carrots. If you like more onions, you do more onions. What I'm telling you are the basic components and some of the things that I like in the curtido that I make. So what this will do is sit on the counter for a couple of days. And what that will do is it will remind me when I come by to go, oh yeah, pull that out, try a piece, see what it tastes like. I'll try it for a couple of days and make sure I have enough salt in there, make sure I have enough oregano, make sure that the flavors taste like what I'm expecting. After two or three days, I'll stick it in the fridge. And it'll stay in my refrigerator until the night before Christmas. Then I'll pull about half of this out, put it in a quart jar, and give it to my mother-in-law as part of her Christmas. So that's Curtido. It's an El Salvadorian coleslaw relish. Uh, a lot of, there's a number of different things people equate it to. I just say it's something crunchy you can put on the tacos, or burgers, or sandwiches, or nachos. I've put it in beans. Uh, it's great if you just want some crunch, a little bit of tang, maybe a little kick, a little spice. 
make it according to your uh, specifications and uh, hopefully it turns out something like that so anyways thank you guys for watching and uh, I'll see you next time I don't think we'll be in the kitchen next time I don't know where we'll be next time but I'll see you on the next video